What it do, everybody? It's your boy, King Crowder, checking back in with another edition of some information, historical information that you may not know. Today, I'm checking in on today's topic is that one thing that's a very much miscommunication is on how enslaved people used to communicate to leave slavery. And also, we also really don't know about one slave society that was never colonized, conquered, or defeated. And they also helped it a lot during the Civil War period. The first thing I want to get into is that I noticed that most people do not have no frame of idea of something called the Tut language. The Tut language was actually a secret language invented during the slavery period. What do I mean by that? It was a language invented in the 18th century by black enslaved individuals in the South. If you ever wonder how did they leave slavery to the North and to the South in Florida, they had a code to go with. So they actually taught each other this language, this whole perception of they didn't know how to communicate or communicate with each other is absolutely false. When they taught each other that, that's how they worked together to escape slavery. So this Tut language was a form of like yuckish and it played on heavy parts of how you word and you speak. And it was called Tutanese. During this period in time, they would use these referencing words to let them know the signals, the landmarks, who was safe, who were the abolitionists, and how you would go to to seek for food, shelter, and food. The reason why this was so heavy and printed on each other, because most people still don't know about it to this day because it's so secretive. It's actually so secretive in myself, y'all, doing my own research, trying to find the book. You can't even really purchase it, which I thought was insane. You know, you can buy anything now from multiple websites, locations. For me, myself, the University of Michigan actually has a Tut book in stock that is a landmark item written, written by Ms. Gloria. I have such an issue purchasing it and seeing it for yourself that it was truly amazing to know that this language is so kept under the rug and they do not want you to see it. Sort of the native tongue that black enslaved people had. It was a way they communicated amongst each other, but you cannot, it is so difficult for me at this moment to try to find the book out myself, y'all, that I was really trying to discover and do more research so you can see it visually. There's websites and other information, but to get it naturally, it is truly is a challenge. Another way they used to communicate that we all are pretty much familiar with is the, um, the Negro spiritual songs. A lot of the songs, if you listen to them without the music, especially in the colonial periods, you can hear what they're telling you to do. The reason why I think this was so good is because you never knew where they were coming from. You never knew how they communicate with each other. And you never knew how they used to defeat and win those battles. Another awesome point that I think we do not discuss enough is how a lot of them enslaved people migrated to the South. Most people do not know that um, in slavery was actually not legal in the South and Florida, especially because the Spaniards were there. So a lot of people always think you had to run to the North to get free when actuality, depending on how far South you were, you moved to the South because the Seminole Indians and tribes down there were free. They were actually kicking a lot of the Spaniards' butts down there in the war. So a lot of part of our history that we do not talk about was how that movement began to get so strong. We always think they ran North and not just South. I always personally thought about that because South Carolina to let's say north of the Mason, Nixon Island, in Maryland, that's a pretty far distance. Actuality, they had a sleeve trans Freeman roads in the south from Florida where a lot of them escaped to. That's why you always wonder why there's a huge black population in Florida, other parts of the world. You've been in again to connect the dots that you see how part of history is broken down. One other thing that I want to point down is there's one um Native American, it was one Native black tribe in the United States that were straight beast, y'all, called the Great Maroon Society. The Maroons were mostly in the, in the Virginia coastal periods. They actually lived in the swamp areas. They lived, they trained, they fought, and they did not lose any battles in these swamps. One reason, it was very hard to engage them. They had expert and battle training. They were they didn't play any games with you. They killed you strong. You ever remember people that live in them backwoods and deep wooded areas? Those were the Maroons. So if you ever travel around this country, you'll meet some black folks that stay in one of these deep colony areas that really much hard to get to, kind of creaky down the road. That's where they stayed. 
And they were there since the 1619 because they wanted to try to get captured by the British and they kicked the British butt when they first landed. And they went into their areas and, and you know, isolated themselves. They isolated themselves as far as food. They lived off the land. They made their own wine and alcohol. And they completely were self-sufficient. The reason why it's such a big information because most people don't know that the military strategies that we used were from the Maroons. Until this day, the Maroons were not infiltrated. They were they, did, they weren't beaten, and they were completely self sufficient. I like to drop those little bit of gems on people because I'm still doing the research in the room. But I think dropping that little bit of information about them is such a powerful tool and what they did throughout the history because they actually we use some of the strategies until this day. But again, to recap it, the Tut language, the Negro spiritual, the South being a freedman spot along with the North and the Great Maroon Society are some wonderful pieces of history information that most people do not know that you should definitely turn yourself and learn about because it's truly remarkable how much people have overcome. It's your boy King Crowder checking out, y'all. Thank y'all for another edition. Please comment, like, subscribe. I appreciate you. Peace.